Hello, in this video I'm going to be going through how to draw this object here. It's a carriage drop. We, we've been given a um, we've been given an isometric view, which is a pictorial version of drawing where we can see three sides and they're drawn at 30 degrees from the horizontal. What we're going to produce is something that looks um, like this, except that answer is wrong. So, um, Oh wait, no, that's that's the second one, that's why it's wrong. Our answer is going to look just like this. So we're going to produce um, our answer here. And so to start off with, I'm going to create a new drawing. So to do that, I'm going to, or when I open um, AutoCAD, I can go to either this sh shape here, or where you can see it says new when I believe my mouse over, I can press Control N. When I do that, I'm going to get AutoCAD ISO, or sorry, um, ACAD ISO. I'm going to open that, and that's how I'm going to start my new drawing. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a rectangle. REC is the command for rectangles. And I'm going to start it at 0, tab 0. That's going to be the first point of my rectangle. Now, we said, um, uh, sorry, I'll have a look at the drawing in just a second. The drawing is um, 80 by 50 tall, 80 by 50 is the dimension of the front uh, front view, 80 by 50. So um, we always give our coordinates in X and Y. So X is how far to the right it is from the starting point and the Y is how far up. So I'm gonna say that it was 80 to the right or 80 wide and then up, so y flies high, is 50 is going to be um, how tall the, this rectangle is. Now you'll see that that's a very, very, very small rectangle. It's way down here. So that's going to be the size of my first shape because AutoCAD doesn't know if you're drawing a house or a space station or a cruise ship or a block, you know, piece of wood that is you know, fits in your hand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste this um, drawing here as my reference. Now the resolution of this is not fantastic, but it will do. I'm actually going to paste it just in this corner for the moment. Okay, so it's a little bit bigger than I'd like, but it will do. Uh, I can scale that, actually. Scale, specifying the base point, and saying 0.5, and that's a little bit better. Okay, it does make the picture a little that much harder to read, but so what we're going to do is we're going to draw this shape from the direction of the arrow A and B. So if we just look here, so this our front view is going to be... Um, I could try and rotate that. Nope. Okay, great. So that's what we're going to try and draw. Now, you'll notice that um, a trap for this first question is that often when we draw draw, um, uh, draw orthogonal drawings, we call this an orthogonal drawing, where we have the top, front, and side views, is that we often draw, draw the front view and then the side view to um, the right of that. In this case, what we're effectively looking at is we're looking at the left side view. So um, you can see that this first shape, I, I'm going to have to move that, but that's okay, that's, that's fine. I can still start with my zero point being where it is. It just means that my origin of my, my references is going to be here and we're just going to move things over in a second. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to draw a rectangle that is going to start at the top, and I'm going to take out this chunk here. So that's 25 by 20 is the dimensions of that. 25 down, 20 across. We can see those two dimensions there. So I'm going to type in REC, again, is my command. And I'm going to start from here, and I'm going to say 20 in the X direction. That's how far it is to the right. And then in the Y direction, it's going to go down, so it's minus 25. And... Oh, Enter, and that gives me my rectangle. Now, there's a reason why it's bad practice. to see how I've got two rectangles, one on top of the other? I've got one rectangle here, and I've got another rectangle here. The reason why that's bad practice is if I was to, like, laser cut this, the laser cutter would go over these lines twice. And if it goes over those lines twice, there's a good chance it's going to burn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the trim command, which is TR, and I'm going to trim the stuff that I don't want. So I'm going to trim... Uh, will that work for me? Hopefully. TR. So I selected everything, and then if I just use TR... These days, trim is pretty smart. When I first used AutoCAD, you had to be very exp explicit with what you were doing. But these days, it's pretty smart. So, And now I've got rid of those extra extra lines, and I now only have all the lines that I need. Um, 
Now, I will point out that the lines aren't joined, but because I'm not doing any hatching, I don't care, and that's beyond what I'm planning on talking about today. So now I'm going to draw another rectangle, and that rectangle is 20 wide and 14 high. Now, apparently in some of these things, I make mistakes when I look at these very um, fuzzy dimensions. So um, Topan is going to be in charge of telling me when I get my dimensions wrong. But I'm going to draw a rectangle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it here at, at the zero zero point. Actually, no, I'm not going to do that. I, I was going to show you how to use the move command, which I could. We'll, we'll do it. We'll do it twice. So first, I'm going to do, I'm going to do my rectangle starting at zero, and I'm just clicking on it. I know where my zero location is, and I'm going to draw. It's twenty wide and fourteen up. Done. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my object, I'm going to press M for move, and I'll say, where's my spec specify my, my base point? Now, I could either type in 0, 0, or I know that this is 0, 0, I can just move it. And it says, how far do I want to move it? I want to move it 50, and that will give me that object. That's one way of doing it. I'm going to show you another way, and this will give maybe people catch up. So if you are behind, you can just listen to this. I'm going to tr create this new object. I'm going to type rec, R-E-C, is my rectangle command. And it says specify my first point. I'm going to type in 50 tab or comma zero. And that's now specifying my first point. And then I'm going to say it's 20 wide and 14 up. And there we go. Now I'm going to do the same thing. Now I think if I just select this object and do TR, uh, even then it works. Okay, there you go. So yeah, it, it really is better than it used to be. Um, AutoCAD used to be much more uh, fussy. Okay, so now I'm going to draw my side. Uh, what do we want? Front or side view first? Front. Uh, sorry, top or side view front first? Top. Top, okay. So to draw the top view, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw some lines just straight up. And then I want an ob a rectangle that is 30 taller. I want to give it myself a, th a gap of 30. Now, there's a couple of ways I could do that, actually. Rather than drawing a line, what I could do is I could just draw this line out here, right? Or even better, just draw a line out here. Okay. Uh, you know what? I... I like the big line, actually, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do a really long line. Okay, so now I'm going to use a command called offset. And offset will draw a line that is an exact distance parallel to whatever I've drawn. So it says here, now when, when, I, I, when I do this, you can see that the command line down the bottom says offset. Specify offset distance or through. Now I want to specify a distance... So I want it to be 30 millimeters. So I'm going to type in 30 and hit space or enter. And then it says select object to offset. And I want to specify this. And then it says which side do I want to offset? I want to offset on this side. I want to hit the line. It will draw that for me. It's drawn a copy that's parallel to my object. And this can be drawn to, used to draw like um, uh, con concentric circles or thing, uh, all sorts of commands. Okay, so I've done that. And now I want another line. And this is going to be the width of the object, which we said was, Topan, I believe it was 50. 50? Okay. So, um, uh, offsets again. So, if I just type in here, uh, space will automatically give it to me. And this time, the default is not through. It's now 30. So, if I type in my new distance, specify distance, I'm going to say 50, enter. And then it says select objects. And then um, I've chosen which side, and then I've, I've I hit, I just click, and then it will draw that object for me again. So that's pretty good. Now I'm going to tr trim these things just to clean them up. Oh, whoops. When I made a mistake, I just hit enter. So I'm going to go, I'm actually just going to select my objects. And there's a difference in AutoCAD, there's a difference between selecting this way and selecting this way. The green will grab everything, green is greedy, whereas blue is very precise. You could think of a noble who's like, oh, well, actually, you know, it's um, so the blue is very precise. So TR, um, and then I'm going to select all my objects, type TR for trim, and then just, oh, space to say that I've finished selecting all my objects, and then boom, all those things are trimmed. I don't need this line anymore, I don't need that line anymore, so they can go too. Now, um, I'm going to draw this line going up from here. So these are construction lines, which we would keep if we were drawing a piece of paper, drawing on a piece of paper, but we don't need here. Okay, uh, and that's pretty much what that object looks like from the top. And then from the side, 
we're going to draw a line. Now you can see how it snaps to 90 degrees. I can set it, make it snap to 30 degrees or 45 degrees or whatever is useful for me. But for the moment, it's snapping to 90 degrees. So we call it ortho snap. And that's quite useful for me. So I'm happy with that. Now, um, I could use that same thing we used before of an, uh, um, an offset, but I don't really have a shape that I want to offset. So I'm just going to draw this line and then I'm going to offset. Now, what's, what gap did I give the other ones before? 30. So I'm going to do that same thing again. 30, space, and then that's drawn. Now, I don't need the original, so I'm going to delete it. Um, e. Now, I used E for arrays to get rid of that. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to draw this shape as it looks if I was to, to look at this. Um, so we're looking at B, so I should be able to see two lines there. If I was looking from the other side, let's call that C, or D, even better, we'll call it D, this other side, I would just see a flat rectangle. It would be a boring shape. That's what I would see. Now, um, if we were drawing this on paper, what we would do is I would choose a line here, and then I would draw this line out at 45 degrees. So I'm just going to draw a really long line, so we'll call it 200, and then to say an angle, I use the less than sign. So that's shift comma, and that will give me the angle, and then I type in 150. 180 minus so 135 is the number, and that give me a 45 degree line. Or I could use the ortho snap, all that sort of stuff. If I did that, I could have just gone like this, and then I've gone to where it's intersected. That would have worked as well. I'm going to do that now. But I mean, what it does is it gives us a good proof, of, and so we can see that that's drawn my shape out for me. So what I'm going to do now is I'll just draw this line out here, and then I'm going to trim some stuff. Tr. I'm going to trim. Boom, boom, boom. I think trimming is actually quite a pleasant experience. Like, I find it a fun thing to do. Now, it doesn't want to trim there because it's not crossing any paths. So what I can do, oh, because it's a whole shape, because we, we remember we made a shape. It's not trimming, it's a whole shape. So I can just select it and I can either use E for erase, or I can just press the delete key because I've got a delete key. You might not have a delete key if you have got like a Mac. Um, now, I don't want to delete this shape. I wanted, so to select the whole shape, do you see how the blue was useful? The blue helped me to get just the shape I wanted. It would have been very, I guess I could have gone like that. That would have worked as well. And now this shape is too long. So um, should we, can we get TR for that? If we select these, TR, that worked as well. Ah, oh, it's pretty good. You can use a, 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 com, a, a command called extend, but we haven't really used that here. Now that's technically what they've asked us to do in this story. So we can live with that. I'm going to make these a little thicker. Um, I'm going to make them 0.5, uh, which is how thick we draw our drawings, which looks actually very thick. Um, but that's theoretically how thick these are supposed to be. Is 0.5. Um, they will look so thick when we do that in reality. Um, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to dimension some stuff. Now, there are a couple of things I like to do when I go to dimensioning. So if I go to my dimensioning standard, um, dimension annotation. So we were going to our dimensioning. So see how it says ISO, one, uh, ISO 25? I'm going to manage that. I'm going to change some things. So what I want to do is I want to modify that, and I'm going to change it. So I only want to work to the nearest millimeter. We're going to use the decimal is going to be not a comma. It's going to be a period because we live in Australia, not Europe. Uh, we're going to round off. Um, we are going to... Uh, so our arrows, we like the closed arrow. Our arrows should be really three millimeters. Um, they should be a little bit wider. Uh, the lines... So I like my lines to extend by two millimeters past. I like them to also be two millimeters off the origin. If you wanted, so it means see that gap. If we change that, we can see. If I go to one, can you see how the line is the dimension line is a lot closer to the object? I like it to be. Two, I'm happy with one or two. I'm sure the standard says somewhere. Um, and I like the extend beyond the dimension line to be two. Uh, I think that's pretty well everything. Primary units. Yeah, okay, that'll do, at least for now. Um, okay, so I'm now going to start drawing some dimensions, and we're just going to go, uh, let's go with the top one here. Now, I like, generally, I like our dimensions to be, 
Oh, I didn't specify a height, um, a height of text. Let me just think of that while I, while I can. Oh, that's where the text, menu standard, height should be three millimeters. Hopefully that works. Okay, so dimension. Now, ordinarily, I would like to do this and I'd, I'd specify it as 10 millimeters away, but there's a problem with that. The reason why I don't want 10 millimeters away is because I also want to dimension this thing, right? And when I make that 10 millimeters away, then um, it's a bit confusing because it looks like this is only 80 from here to here, whereas in actual fact, it is 60. I believe it's 60, yeah. Um, so that's a bit confusing. So what I want to do instead is I'm going to make this one here 20 away. Um, no, I think it's made it too far. I think it's made it 30. So I'm just going to start again. I'm going to go from here to here and then go 20. And that, that's what we want. Okay, so that gives me this dimension as well. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to dimension. I'm going to go here and here and I'm going to say 10. Now, do you notice that the, the text is written above the line and to the left of the line? Let me prove that. So if I go below the object, I'm going to do these dimensions here, and I'm going to say, so we're just going to go dim, uh, boom, 10. And then um, if I hit space, it knows what my last command was. So I don't have to type it in over and over again. Now, there is a, a, a saying that, well, um, there's a convention that you shouldn't do this, right? Why should you not add that one there? Does anyone know? Why? So see how I say that equals 80 and that equals 80, but why wouldn't I include that bottom one? It's unnecessary. It's unnecessary. And the idea is that if you have too many dimensions, on one hand, it's a good thing because it provides a check. The person on site, and they say, I, I remember hearing this when I worked on site, the very first thing you do is when you're a junior engineer, you say, okay, Billy, you're going to count up with the calculator every dimension and make sure they work, right? If they don't add up, you need, we're going to call the engineer or the architect straight away and we're going to get that fixed. But generally speaking, when you're making the drawing, you don't want to give a, an opportunity for that. Even though it's a good check, the reason for that is because the more dimensions you have, the more likely it is that you're going to change something and not correct it. Yeah, And because changes are very common, we want to minimize the number of times we have to refer to things, the number of times we have to change things. Because the more times things are referenced, the more likely we are to have an error. That's generally the, 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 that's the concept. I see arguments for both, but that is the concept people are talking about. Okay, so dimension, DIM is, gives me dimension if I don't want to go up to the top. And I don't know why that didn't work though. DIM should have done that. Dimensioning from here to here and then 20. Why did that not work? 20. There we go. Must have clicked some more. And that's the object drawn. I'm pretty happy with that. I don't need this reference anymore. I eat that to get rid of it. Um, if I wanted, I could move everything so it was this side of the origin. I could do that, but I'm, I'm actually quite happy with this. And what we're going to do is we're going to print it on a PDF. So we're going to go to, um, we're going to set our printer. Whoops. We're going to set our printer as Adobe PDF. I'm going to print the extent. That means I'm going to print everything that's on, that I've drawn. I want the, the picture to be in the center. I don't want it to be the scale. I, I, sorry, I want it to be the scale. I want it to be one to one. And so let's have a look at what my object looks like. Uh, I also, I want my page to be, can you see how this picture is portrait? It's vertical. I want it to be landscape. So let's have a look now. And that's what my object looks like. Yeah, that's exactly what we want. Now, I will print that as uh, we call this task 4.1. No HD. What's HD stand for? Hidden detail. Okay. So we're going to draw that now with, we're just going to add in hidden detail. Um, okay. So what we're going to do is the hidden detail will give us a line here. And 
The hidden detail in both views is this object on the bottom. Now, ordinarily, there is no good reason for us to have this hidden detail. Oh, now I'm going to show you a fun trick. Rather than me, if I use trim, do you see how I have to trim this twice or multiple times? Right? It's so what we're actually better off doing is tr select that object. What we want to do is we want to have a fence. So if I go like this, tr, now it'll delete the whole line. And so we're going to do the same thing here, tr, and now it'll delete the whole thing. Okay. Now what I need to do is I need to change these lines. I want them to be that same width. I want them to be 0.5 millimeters, right? Half a millimeter. But the line type is going to be different. It's not going to be continuous. It's going to be other. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to load a new line type and I'm going to use ISO dash. Uh, actually, I like this one here. Dash space is what we're going to use. Now, um, that did not seem to work. I loaded it, but I didn't apply it. Now, do you see how it doesn't really look great because there's not enough lines there? And the reason for that is because what we want to need to change is we need to change the properties. So if I go to Layer Properties, now um, I want to change the scale. Um, so Line Weight, that was a zero. And what I want to do is I want to change the scale. Maybe it's not Layer Properties. It's Properties somewhere, though. Uh, properties, oh, here we go. Properties, I had to expand it, so I had to go like here, properties down, and then out, and then there is a scale. Um, put scale, maybe? Plot style. You have done this more recently than me. Where's the scale? Oh, I haven't selected anything that maybe is part of it. Okay. Plot style. Thickness. Line type scale. And we're going to go to 0.5. much better. Okay, and now I can go to plot. Let's go through that again. So we're going to go to Adobe PDF, A4. We're going to only play the extent. Extents means the entire object. We want to center it. We want to plot the thing not upside down. We want to plot landscape. And we're going to not fit to the paper. We're going to set it to the scale of 1 to 1. Now let's have a look at it. Beautiful. Okay, we're going to plot that one, and we're going to call that task for one with HD. Okay, um, so let's have a look at our tabs. Uh, cancel. So there we have the object. Let's rotate that as well. One eighty. Ah, oh, again, that was good. Okay, so that's our object. Let's make that full screen so we can really see that in our picture. So that's what our um, thing will print as. We can see the thickness, but we can see the difference in thickness between our um, our object and our dimension lines. But it's a bit dull. Um, we can see that we always write our dimensions to the um, to the left of the line and above the line. Uh, I probably could have chucked in an extra dimension there just to demonstrate that, but that's fine. And then our hidden detail is also shown as thick dark lines, but they're dashed, and we change the scale to make it fit nicely on the page. So that's it. That's the that's the uh, task done.